Hello. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Hey, yeah, I can hear you. Can hey, you hear me? excellent. Excellent. Awesome. There we go. Okay, let me take this charger out. I think I got enough juice. How you doing? Mary, Mary, uh no, uh, no work, no uh <laughs> I know. What are you trying to say right now? I don't know. I don't know. It didn't come out the way I expected. <laughs> hey, Ruth, can we, Ruth, yes. can, you, can you say something, make sure we can hear you? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Here you are. Hi, Ruth. Hey, how are you? Thank you for oh, doing this. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for inviting me. Sure. Just trying to get my phone propped up so that it doesn't slide. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I've got remnants of Christmas everywhere. Uh, you know what? That's pretty good. Oh, That's pretty cool. Away. Did I go away? Okay. There, there we go. go. Did everybody have a nice holiday? I did. How about you? It was good. It was good. Awesome. awesome. Are we recording this? Yeah, the uh, Zoom call will record it. Great. And then I'll be able to. Hopefully, it you know it won't be so large that I can't send it to you without having to like sure. sit file it or something. Right. Did I ever send you the vendor? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> you should have told me I forgot. I just forgot. I, you know what? I it was it's one of them things that I think about while I'm doing something else, and then it just kind of you know, okay. Well, I'll try to get it. Like, yeah, and I'm always like, oh, you yeah, of my life. <laughs> Everything is just right. Yeah. I'm like, I need to ask Mika about this. Oh, no, what's what? <laughs> I forgot I had this. Yeah, my husband got me a t shirt that says. I have ADD. Oh, look at chicken. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it. Exactly how it goes. <laughs> Someone need a, a little more light. We're so let me turn some lights on. Oh. Okay. Oh, oh, excuse me. Just realized how bad my hair looks. You look all right. Come here. Come here. Come on. I, I look like exactly what I've been doing today. Nothing. Oh my god. Right. Me too. <laughs> Now the dog's waiting to go out, and I done waited too late to take him out, so. Uh-oh, uh-oh. How's my Warby Poo? He's fine. He over here, girl. That's Kick not it. one of my better sights. Let's turn that. Whoa. <laughs> there. Let me get the light. Is that okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can see you. Okay. I've got my libations for the evening. Oh, I've just got water. I intend to have libations after. It's probably safe. I just, I know if I don't do it while I don't have the baby in my face, then I don't get to do it. There you go. <laughs> well, last uh, week, this time I passed a kidney stone. And let me tell you, that was not pretty. So Ruth would be drinking water. Water. Yeah. Let's oh, go don't ever that. pass a kidney. Not pretty. Just not Ooh, pretty. That sounds hard. That mm -mm. Sounds hard. It's not pretty. All right. <gasps> There's I think we got everybody. We got everybody. Right yeah. Look at us all on time and everything. Go women. <laughs> and... We're in two different time zones. You yeah. And the weird thing about Arizona, they don't do daylight savings. So half oh. the year we're one hour behind Dallas and half the year we're two hours. Oh, you know what? We are Pacific half the year, mountain half the year. It's crazy. I think you everybody know? else just needs to get on the, the ball with no time change because it doesn't really make sense anyway. It right. doesn't anymore. And we're not going anywhere anyway. Right. Yeah. Nice to not wear a mask. Right. Like if it's dark, I turn on the light. It's. All, I mean. It's, <laughs> it's okay. You are a problem solver. <laughs> if it's dark, I turn on the light. You know. If it's cold. You know what, Bruce? Yes, <laughs> Bruce, what I did consider was um, a reader, like a narrator. Hmm. Or the uh, intro to the scenes and stuff. Yeah, the stage directions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you want to read them or do you want me to read them? Um, why don't you? Because I hate to say this. I, I'm getting cataracts, and so uh -oh. I, it's kind of a crapshoot. Um, okay. No, them. that's fine. I just I didn't consider it and. Um, I'm just now looking at it going, you didn't consider maybe needing one more reader. Yeah. Okay. Cool beans. And I'm going to take notes if I see any glaring thing. And if you guys see any typos or something too, just let us know. Cause I think 
Yeah. We got a couple. What? I took trigonometry. I didn't take typing, okay? Well, first I see Kamika's name is spelled wrong. <laughs> what? Spencer. What is my name even on the... On the title, S P E N. Oh, yeah. Spell it for me. C E R. C E R. See, I got the K in Kamika right, but there was a C somewhere and I just didn't know. You spelled it the British way. Spencer. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, it's cool. The only Cantrell family has your two out. I used to tell my students at the Magnet when they were evaluating me. Uh, that uh, Cantrell and Brilliant have both have two L's. <laughs> I know. <laughs> hey, Vicky. Hi. Hi, Vicky. Hello. Hello. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Hi, friends. Hi there. Hi there. Had to get my um, Ethernet cable. <laughs> Word I haven't heard in a while. Ethernet. Ethernet. <laughs> I just need ether. <laughs> yeah, if they could put that on Amazon, it'd be great. Yeah, <laughs> Amazon great. dot whoa. Yeah. I uh, my computer doesn't always uh, it logs on fine, but I have to plug in directly to the modem. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to talk for a while. It just goes. I'm out. I've got, I've got mine plugged in because I, I don't know how long it holds the battery. So yeah, my, my old computer is like that. Yeah, I just so, keep it plugged in. But I'm kind of that way too. I don't know how long I'm going to hold my battery. So I have to plug in. Amen. Yeah, this is the, I mean, yeah, that's the Ethernet goes directly to the modem. So I don't lose my inner. Mm. Okay, well, um, I want to thank everybody for showing up. Uh, I want to go ahead and get started because I, I've never hosted a full Zoom meeting, but I hear that, you know, you only have like 45 minutes or it allowed me to choose a time frame and I chose an hour and 15 minutes, but yeah. I'm not sure if it's going to give me that. So I have it in the future, just so you know, uh, if you ever need it, I have a, a pro account with um, you don't have to worry about time limits and stuff okay well i'm i'm using my old school account but they apparently they uh, haven't taken me off of it so um that's good so i'm hoping that 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 I, that it's a pro account that i'm connected to but well, i'll time it very much. awesome okay so um we're gonna go ahead and get started i'll be reading the um uh, stage directions anything that's in parentheses, I will not be reading. It'll just be uh, the accurate directions. Yeah. 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 Hi, Gail. I don't know you. Hi, I'm Kendall. Oh, it still says Gail. Bender. It says That's Gail. That's not my name is Kendall. <laughs> Hi, Kendall. I forgot that that still said Gail. Bender. That's, oh, wow. That's hilarious. Yeah, Gail Bender sisters. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I love that show. Okay, here okay. we go. So, um, uh, Luke Perkins. Um, do I need to read the characters, time and place, and all of that? Um, Ruth, not. I, I think we're okay. Don't okay. you? Yeah, I think we're fine. Okay. Portraits. Lights up. No. Portrait scene one. Lights up. The stage is empty with the exception of two chairs on either side of the stage. Luke Pickens sits in one chair and Nina Clark in the other. While in and around the chairs, they direct their thoughts and comments to the audience. When they come together in dialogue, it is staged in the center area. And neither crosses too far into the other space if they can help it. Above the center stage area in scenes one through five, a portrait of Dennis, Nina's son, is depicted at age four, seven, 10, 13, or 15, respectively, to indicate the passage of time. Scene six includes a portrait of Lou. In all the scenes, various artworks are also shown in the area. When the moving van appeared next door, Virgil, my husband, told me I needed to get ready to bake one of my peach cobblers to welcome our new neighbors. 
I think he just wanted me to do that because whenever I made a cobbler to get away, give away, I made him a mini cobbler too. I learned years before it was just easier to make a mini cobbler for him because otherwise Virgil would just go on and on about it was how his nose was filled with the smell of cinnamon covered peaches, but his tongue and his stomach were denied their taste. He said it was a cruel and unusual punishment. He would just grumble and moan about the emptiness in his stomach. And I found it was just easier to hush him up by filling his gob with a mini cobbler. Now, I don't mean to say that Virgil didn't want me to welcome them to the neighborhood. I just meant Virgil also wanted to cobbler. Anyway. I made a cobbler and went back to give it to him. I was a little surprised that Virgil didn't warn me they were black. Not that any of that mattered to me. And before anyone gets their panties in a wad, I realized I should be more sensitive in what I say. I should have said he didn't warn me that they were African-Americans. Isn't that what they like to be called? I always said I'd someday buy me a house in a quiet little neighborhood. I thought I'd found that when I moved on Franklin Street. The map described it as the friendliest street in the Buena Vista development of Singing Hills. The ad boasted of affordable housing for small, friendly families with strong values, love of privacy, and friendly people. I found a three-bedroom, one-and-a-half bath with a porch and a carport within my means. It also had a study that I gave to Dennis to use as a studio. It was perfect. It was everything the ad promised and guaranteed freedom from what me and Dennis were moving away from. No more government sponsored subsidized housing, no more random police raids on the adjacent apartment, no more lack of access to fresh foods and vegetables. The isolation and segregation of black life, which limited my son's imaginative wingspan was no longer. I had brought him to a place where he could grow and flourish and we could finally sleep well. We could dream uninterrupted in full color. I had resigned myself, you know, accepted over the years the Buena Vista Singing Hills neighborhood had become more colorful. Singing Hills is a suburban nest of houses that's filled with all races of people. So it was no surprise to me to get a visit from my next door neighbor. She had this Marion Cunningham smile and was holding a sweet, warm dish in her hands. A white woman welcoming me, welcoming me to the neighborhood. It was refreshing. There were no white people in Bonton where we had lived, let alone friendly ones. From the time Dennis opened the door, I could smell the buttery crust of the dessert. Smelled like my grandmother's crust. This was a smell so good, it woke me out of my nap on the couch. Now, I don't mean to be disrespectful. It's just hard keeping up with what names are allowed and what names aren't to call the different races anymore. I grew up with the word Negro being okay to call them, but now if you use that word, it's almost like you called them, which you didn't. Calling someone that N word is horrible. Not Negro, but See, I know how names can hurt. It's just like how I feel when a white, about a white person being called a cracker. As a kid, <laughs> I thought being called a cracker meant I like saltines. Well, I was sure wrong about that. It meant someone who cracked a whip. Isn't that just awful? I, well, I'm certainly not a cracker. I never held a whip. My family never owned slave. My family was kind to people, all kinds of people. Mama used to tell me the story about how her daddy, my grandpa, who I never met, but during the Great Depression, grandpa ne let Negroes or uh, African Americans who lived in their own part of town come over to my grandparents' house and pick all the fruits and vegetables that were left in the family vegetable garden. 
Mama and her siblings had taken all they needed from the garden and my grandpa hated to waste food. So he went to see the minister at the Negro's little church and offered any and all of the remaining contents of that garden to the minister and his flock. They just needed to come over and pick what they wanted. Nowadays, if someone saw them out there picking fruits and vegetables in my grandpa's garden, they'd yell something like, Lord, they're back to plantation days. But truth be told, they got to keep and eat all that they picked, and there were no whips to be had. And when my grandpa died a few years later, the whole congregation of African Americans came to honor him by standing in the rain outside that church during his funeral service. That sure said something, doesn't it? My family's roots contain no bias. No cracker here. Anyway, I rang the neighbor's doorbell and this little boy couldn't be older than four, opened the door and just stared at me through the screen door I wasn't sure what was what or if he was maybe a little simple in the head I thought first I had first thought he was the son of the new neighbor's maid and if that was the case why hadn't their maid answered the door instead of her son she looked pleasant enough it was how she looked at Dennis then at me and then back to Dennis that made me hesitate Made an image, photo of Dennis Four. Lights up on center area. Lou has crossed to Nina's porch area holding a cobbler. Nina is inside her home. Are you allowed to answer the door without any adult supervision? Is your mother home? She shouldn't be. I shouldn't be what? Are you his mother? Yes, and who are you? I live across the street. Well, hello, neighbor. I shouldn't be what? I, I was just saying he's so young to be answering the door alone. He's not alone. I'm right here. Well, now you are, but aren't you afraid he'll wander outdoors and... And what? Start a rock band? <laughs> he's four. Why would I let my four-year-old wander? He can't reach the screen door lock. Anyway, is that my welcome to the neighborhood pie? Your neighborhood? Smells divine. What kind? A uh, peach cobbler. Dennis loves peaches. Who is Dennis? My son. His name is Dennis. Well, that's better than some of the other names around here, like Shaka or Jorge. Dennis is a good old fashioned American name. He's named after his great, great grandfather. Oh, uh-huh. Hmm, I smell nutmeg and brown sugar. Don't go bringing me and Dennis too much good food or you're liable to end up with two new black family members. <laughs> Come on in and share some of this with us. Uh, Virgil, my husband is waiting for me. Almost time for my programs to come on. Oh, right. Well, thanks for the cobbler. Fade out image, photo of Dennis Four. Lights out on center area as Nina and Lou return to their chairs. In my old neighborhood, Bonton, to decline an invitation to sit and visit can be taken as an insult. We were poor, but we had community. My new neighbor was nice, but she wasn't interested in really getting to know me. I could tell by how she backed away after I invited her inside. I was borderline insulted, but whatever. She made a great cobbler and that counted for something, even if I never got her name. I let Dennis go outside to play while I made dinner. My new stove was electric, not gas, and it made my fried chicken taste just as good as gas as a gas stove top. No real difference. When I called Dennis in to prepare for dinner, he demanded I come out and see what he'd drawn. Uh-oh, sorry, my script just left, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, what he'd drawn on the sidewalk. It's certified that my move to Buena Vista was not in vain. Made an image, Dennis's chalk drawing on the sidewalk depicting the earth held in the hands of God. 
there on the concrete, my son had rendered a full, a full chalk drawing of the earth in the hands of God. He's got the whole world in his hands. Dennis said to me, yes, baby. Yes, he does. It was amazing. I mean, Dennis was only four, but he was exhibiting a talent for drawing and painting that I saw in him before he learned to walk. Now he was showing growth. His strokes were bolder and his use of curves and non-linear approach was sharper. It took my breath away. Before long, this entire community of Buena Vista would know they are in the presence of the next Jacob Lawrence or Henry Osawa Tanner. <laughs> no one had ever marked up the sidewalk like that before those new neighbors walked in. This subdivision was clean, safe, and beautiful for a reason. I served on the neighborhood watch for a reason, to keep everyone aware of what will and will not be tolerated. And vandalism of the neighborhood property is one of them. This was a child's work, a child who hadn't been taught the rules of how we like to live in Buena Vista. His mother didn't mention a husband, so I'm not sure if he has any real discipline. Hmm. That, Dennis, uh, that Dennis was the only child on this end of the street. Not, oh, sorry. That Dennis was the only child on this end of the street. And let me tell you, after meeting his mother and seeing how she let him just run wild in her house, opening doors to strangers and all, it was no wonder he ran outside and did as he pleased. What was on that sidewalk was pure vandalism. I showed it to Virgil and he thought it was just floor for me that the work was impressive and that it added a childlike innocence to the sidewalk as well as paying homage to some afrofuturism that he said was an art form from the late 1960s i didn't know what he was talking about or how he knew something about something called how he knew about something called afrofuturism who care? I had to remind him that the code of conduct for our neighborhood association stipulated neighbors were not allowed to vandalize any neighborhood property, which included sidewalks. Virgil argued that vandalism was malicious while that drawing with hands holding the earth was a positive image. I told him he needed to start wearing a hat more often because the sun must have fried some of his brain like battered chicken in a vat of grease saying stuff like that. Sidewalks are for feet to travel, not hands to hold chalk and use it like some sort of canvas. I said it was destructive. Virgil said it was constructive. I said it showed arrogance and he said it showed passion. I said it was disturbing and unattractive. And Virgil said it, it was, was mesmerizing. mesmerizing. Everything we were teaching Dennis about Christianity was paying off. Mesmerizing. Black hands holding the earth. <laughs> I thought it was appalling so much for hoping that girl's lack of attention towards her boy would not cause problems in our quiet little neighborhood. Fade out image. Dennis's chalk drawing on a sidewalk depicting the earth held in the hands of God. Before I left for work, I went to take a picture of Dennis's chalk art and text it to his father, Paul. It would, it would lift his spirits. He's away. He returned from Iraq changed. Nightmares, delusions, struggles. Most of the time he was tolerable, but on his bad days, he was a danger to me and Dennis. After a long talk, he decided it would be best if he admitted himself into a program for PTSD survivors. So he's in Seattle and we primarily communicate over our computers and by FaceTime. I wish Dennis and his father had more of a connection, but the politics of being in the military kept them apart. 
he held Dennis as a baby, but Dennis has no recollection of that. What he does remember is the yelling at ghosts, the inability to take showers and his dad's breakdown in the middle of Deep Ellum during four, July 4th. Seriously, I'm glad Paul is alive and he's somewhere safe. When he sees Dennis's drawing, it will definitely lift his spirits and bring father and son closer together. Fade in image, chalk drawing mostly washed away. But I was shocked to see that the drawing had been washed away, not just splashed with water, but intentionally scrubbed clean. I need to nip that sort of stuff in the bud before it spread like wildfire. Who? What kind of person would demolish a child's art? Of course I lived in a new neighborhood. The streets were clean, the yards were manicured, everybody had flower beds, but it shocked me to think somebody around here could have looked at Dennis's drawing and not be moved by its beauty. It was then that I only allowed Dennis to create his chalk drawings on the driveway in front of the garage, where whitewashing his work would be a sign of trespassing. Fade out image, chalk drawing mostly washed away. Portraits, scene two, fade in image, school photo of Dennis, seven. Dennis was excited about going back to school, first grade. I'd done everything to ensure he was ready, got him all the supplies he needed, brand new tailored uniforms and the choice to take his lunch every day or use his free lunch program card. When Virgil decided to retire, I was all for it. Work had gotten more difficult for him physically and mentally, and he was just miserable. When he retired, well, it was a mixed blessing. You get twice the husband and half the salary. Virgil started piddling around. Oh, I mean, I mean piddle as in not focus, just sort of walking around in a daze, not Piddle is having problems with his bladder, <laughs> at least not right then. It was a time of new beginnings. No more naps or nursery rhymes. School wasn't like it was when I was growing up. Dennis would be working on computers and expected to learn some Spanish. I wasn't worried in the least bit. Dennis showed strong focus and diligence from the womb. <laughs> he was made for long-term success. Anyways. Virtual was driving me nuts, starting on one project and losing interest in it, and then starting on another. Or worse, expecting me to go full force on some idea of what he wanted us to do next, whether I wanted it, whether I wanted to or not, drove me crazy. Virgil was the man next door. Three years and I was finally putting a name with a face. Probably because he was retired and all he did was fiddle around his garage working on old electronics or watercoloring. Our first meeting was more accidental than not. I'd picked Dennis up from school and as we pulled into the driveway, there Virgil was sitting before an easel staring at a blank canvas. He reminded me of Bob Ross, the man from PBS, except without the Jewish Afro. Dennis was out of the car and on Virgil's porch talking and asking questions before I could get the gear in park. Virgil decided he might like to take up watercoloring, which I thought came out of the blue, but he said as a kid he liked to paint, but his daddy thought it was a waste of time. So he painted for a while, and to show support, I bought him an expensive set of watercolors. He turned out a few good ones. I even had one even paid to have one matted and framed. And let me tell you, buddy, that it ain't cheap to do. I introduced myself to the nicest man on the street by far. Virgil Pickens was full of conversation and warmth and he'd taken to Dennis immediately. That man had an open heart and the kindest eyes. He remembered seeing the chalk drawing a few years back and was surprised when I told him that it had been washed from the sidewalk, but that was all water under the bridge and nothing Virgil nor I was interested in investigating further. Then the next thing I know, Virgil went off and bought some woodworking tools and started on some new projects. Made an easel and a small bookshelf and finally a rocket chair that he put out on our front porch. On his agenda that first day we met was talking to Dennis about technique and his love for art. Virgil gave Dennis a box with brushes and tubes of paint 
It was the fancy stuff I've seen in stores, not the stuff students usually are forced to start with. He told me to come back later or send Dennis over to gather the easel. He was an okay woodcrafter, but then his eyesight took a turn for the worst and he was afraid it might cost him a finger or two. So that was all she wrote on the woodworking. I declined and declined, but that night Virgil brought the easel over and left it on the porch. He seemed determined to be a supporter and friend to Dennis and I didn't mind. It seemed innocent enough. As a Christian, I, thought, I saw it as God looking out for me and my son in ways unexpected. Fade out image, school, photo of Dennis, seven. Fade in image, a watercolor portrait. Then one day there was this watercoloring on our fridge. I was so happy that Virgil was painting again. We just loved first grade. Dennis was making all E's, which means excellent. <laughs> it was the best thing he'd done. Made me wish I'd waited on spending money to frame his earlier painting. My baby was spelling at an advanced level, writing at an advanced level, adding and subtracting at an advanced level, as well as getting along with others in ways that allowed him to be line leader and all around example of a great student. Not to mention his studio slowly became a space of creativity and wonder. Come to find out that wasn't Virgil's work at all. Virgil had given that expensive watercolor and set to the neighbor's kid who had painted that picture that was now on my fridge. Dennis told the chalk story during story time at school, which led to little Karen Ann Mosley coming by the house one evening with a, a Kehinde Wild, uh, Wiley coloring book. They were rare, so whoever this child was, she came from privilege. Karen Ann was friendly and her relationship with Dennis was tight. Wasn't that I minded that Virgil gave that stuff away. As soon as Karen Ann walked in the door, Dennis hugged her and then they did this fly handshake. <laughs> Her father served as an adjunct at one of the local community colleges, and her mother was a bank manager at Wells Fargo. The Womacks were former hippies who believed in equality for all, which made them and Karen Ann welcomed at any time. Although I wish Virgil would have said something to me, because maybe I could have sold those supplies on eBay or Craigslist, you know, if I knew how to do that sort of thing. It was nice seeing Dennis with a white friend his age. He had black friends, but they had their own common places of connectivity. But Karen Ann became Dennis's fixture, and rightfully so. They were both gifted artists. Or maybe I might have wanted to try and watercolor myself. Or maybe. I don't know exactly, but Virgil didn't leave me any option since he already gave them away. Virgil would come by sometimes and walk around Dennis's studio like he was at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in, in NYC. He said that Dennis could one day stand with the greats, Michelangelo, Picasso, or Polak, and he brought an art book with him to show Dennis those artists' work. And he gave them to folks who already feel a sort of entitlement. You know, they expect to be given stuff just, just cause. Virgil replaced his old borrowed easel with a customized one that he made himself. He got Dennis more paints, paint brushes with natural bristles and a $100 gift card to the Ansel Art Store in University Park. He said it was an early birthday present for Dennis. Just made no sense at all. You keep giving st people stuff they haven't earned and mark my words, they get used to it and quit working and live off of others for the rest of their lives. I tried to incur some of the costs, but Virgil would have none of it. I didn't argue. After all, random acts of kindness are a random act of God, especially when the kindness benefits you in a direct way. I was at peace to return the paints and brushes I had on layaway and actually get Dennis something else to make his birthday even more special. Mr. Virgil, as Dennis called him, <laughs> was a blessing to my son. What was Virgil gonna do next? Give him his rocking chair? Virgil said I was being petty, but I know what I know. You gain pride and self-worth by earning stuff, not by expecting others to just hand it to you on a platter. That sort of attitude really galls my bladder. I had taken a day off. Nothing was the matter. 
I just wanted a full day to myself to do as I pleased. And first on my agenda was to not do anything. <laughs> I decided to sit outside on my porch and enjoy the fruit of my labor. When I saw my neighbor and she saw me, and as much as I think both of us would have liked to have just ignored each other, it would have been rude. And we both seemed to know that. I realized I hadn't seen much of her since the peach cobbler. Damn, I forgot to return her pants. Lights up on center area. Lou is sweeping her porch area as Nina enters her own porch area and sees Lou. The dialogue occurs as though they are talking to each other from across the street. I still have your pan. Uh, I went on and got a new one. You're home today. Everything okay at your work? I needed a day to myself is all. How's everything with you? You enjoying Mr. Virgil's retirement? Uh, it's right as rain. We're doing more things he's, we've always wanted to do. He said you went to the Museum of Art the other day. He did. I love that place. <laughs> it was my first time there. Dennis insists we go each time a new exhibit comes through. What'd you think? I'm not a big fan of the art in places like that, especially that modern stuff, just a bunch of colors thrown every which way. Why even your boy could paint better than that. Makes no sense at all. Virgil insisted we join as members and you know what that means. They get you on a list and be asking for a handout till kingdom comes. I think it's more important to give things to give to things like your church or feeding those poor children in places like Appalachia. Or well, the poor children of Bonton right here in Dallas. But my Virgil has a heart of gold when it comes to the arts. I can't tell him much, so I don't even try. He told me he'd given your son some art supplies. It was an early birthday gift. Yes, very kind of him. Gifts that come out of our home usually come from me and my husband, but this time virtual kept me in the dark. I tried to incur some of the costs, but Mr. Virgil wouldn't hear of it. And truth be told, Dennis has been more inspired than ever to create. He takes pride in using those supplies. Well, if you thought it was too much, maybe you should have tried harder. Excuse me? Those supplies don't come cheap. I just told you that your husband would not take my money. Uh-huh. If you want those paints, brushes, and easels back, then I will gladly go inside and get them for you. There's no need for that. What's done is done. Did you say easels? Yes. Mr. Virgil gave him an old one and made a brand new one that he built in your garage. Oh, he did, did he? doesn't have the time to fix our back door, but he sure as heck has time to build some easel that's not even for Mr. Virgil or me. Right. Fade out image, a watercolor portrait. Lights out on center area as Nina and Lou return to their chairs. Why call him Mr. Virgil? It's either Mr. Pickens, which shows respect, or Virgil, which shows your friends, but Mr. Virgil is neither fish nor fowl must be a cultural thing personally i think it's disrespectful and rude just plain old rude i finished resting that day from the inside but it was difficult to do because mr virgil and her had a huge fight over those supplies luckily dennis was at school and never heard any of it <clears throat> Portraits, scene three, fade in image, school photo of Dennis, 10. So we had this controversy at our church during vacation Bible school of all places. We had planned a contest for third and fourth graders when, with the first place winner getting a new Bible bound in white leather with their name in gold embossed letters and a $20 pizza coupon well as they say best laid plans of mice and men go haywire from the get-go what started out as a biblical art contest 
almost caused a religious schism, the likes of which has not been seen since Martin Luther, not that Martin Luther King Jr., but the white one, you know, the German, the one that fathered all them Lutherans. Anyway, it was a holy mess. I kid you not. It got U-G-L-Y. Sister Prescott told me about an art contest being held by a local Christian church. She'd been asked to be a judge. She was thinking maybe I should let Dennis participate. Initially, I was against it. Dennis was in fourth grade now, and I had to put him in tutoring for science. However, when Mr. Virgil brought the flyer over and showed it to me, I decided why not? Dennis doesn't deserve to be punished because I want his academics to be just as good as his art. So one night during a rerun of Good Times, I gave Dennis the flyer and we talked about him entering. He was more excited than I'd seen him all that week. All he had to do was paint something with a biblical reference and Dennis was more than galvanized to put forth his best work. So much so, he promised me he'd win the prizes they were offered. <laughs> We had decided to open our arms and hearts to the other churches in the community who also had summer church programs. I mean, we even reached out to the Catholics and the Vietnamese Baptist Church with all that weird writing on their church signs. When I first saw that stuff, I thought they were writing in tongues, you know, some weird Vietnamese interpretation of speaking in tongues, but later I found out those signs are written in the Vietnamese language. <laughs> Would you please tell me how some American Baptist is ever supposed to know that they are a Baptist congregation with all that scribbly pibbly lettering? I mean, those people are in America now. They need to read and write in America, or the, you know what I mean, English. The Christian church made me feel like I'd blinked and magically transported to a micro cathedral with majestically high ceilings, designer stained glass windows, and gold plated doorknobs. The art contest was being held in the fellowship hall. The members of the committee had transformed the room into a bona fide art gallery, complete with price lists and do not touch signs. There were 60 entries total, and ooh, they were a beautiful sight to see. Young, God fearing people using art to show how much they loved Jesus. Having an odd number of judges meant there would be no ties. Well, to me, it was no contest. The clear winner, and actually she did win, was 10-year-old Karen Ann Mosley. Now, her parents are a little on the hippy-dippy side, but she is just a dynamo little artist. She drew a wonderful scene with the Lord Jesus and a little girl. This little girl was looking up sweetly at our Lord, and he had his little hand, his hand on her little blonde head, ready to bless her. Everybody thought it was so precious. <sighs> well, not everybody. There was this other drawn in black and white by my neighbor's boy. Karen Ann had used pastel temper paints, which gave it the edge, in my opinion, over the black and white one. Anyways, the other artwork which I think the Catholic judge liked because it showed the Lord being crucified. Everybody knows that Catholics are partial to being crucified. <laughs> so the Catholic judge voted for it. And then that Vietnamese judge picked it too. Now, I'm not sure if he can even read or write English. So how in the Sam Hill could he possibly be a good judge of art? Uh, because everybody was trying to be open-minded, he got to put in his two cents. The vote was tied, and it all boiled down to a fellow parishioner of mine, Mavis Enright, to break the tide. Now, Mavis is a God-fearing woman, which is why I like her. She picked Karen Ann's picture, hands now. I loved Karen Ann's heart. Aunt Karen Ann's work, but my son's technique was more grounded. Dennis's work came from his understanding of Black people's pain. I found my son, gathered up his art, and we headed home. I let Dennis know that this was a very small moment in his very big life, and more contests would come along where his skill would win outright. That's when he asked me to put the Rolling Stones CD into the player. Old Mick was right. You can't always get what you want. When we got home, he walked over to see Mr. Virgil. Mavis told me his drawings sure did capture 
our Lord's pain. But, and this was a huge but, she then said, Fade out image, school photo of Dennis 10. Fade in image, charcoal drawing of Jesus on the cross with dark features. He made Jesus black. <laughs> I just looked at her, not knowing what to say. And then Mavis said she could not, in good conscience, get <clears throat> in first place to a false Jesus portrait. Amen to that. Of course my son painted Jesus black. What other color would he paint him? Pennies are the color of bronze, and so was Jesus' skin. The Bible says so. Bronze, not white. Sure, Dennis could have been inspired by that Good Times episode when J.J. Evans used Ned the Wino as his Black Jesus model, but Dennis's painting was an original concept of Jesus as a Black man because that's what he'd been taught by me. Kemet and Kush were territories where the inhabitants were bronze-skinned, the beginning generations of mankind, the seat of civilization. Dennis's painting showed Jesus with hair like Billy D. Williams, skin that matched Idris Elba's, a nose like the original Michael Jackson, and these gentle, caring eyes. Bottom line was, my son didn't paint a white Jesus. Well, some folks start getting their noses into business that didn't really concern them, and people start talking about why that Dennis kid and his black Jesus portrait lost. Somebody said it was the Vietnamese judge let it slip, but who can understand anything that man says? I think it was the Catholic judge upset that the crucified Jesus lost. Well, all I can say is hackles were raised. People were calling each other bigots. Others said it was sacrilegious. Neighbors weren't speaking to each other and wouldn't let their own kids play with their na other neighbor's kids. I made a conscious decision that night to pull Dennis from all school activities and cut his social time tremendously by enrolling him in private art lessons. There was no need for me or Dennis to keep trying to please people who didn't see the value in what we could bring to the table. Living in Buena Vista was slowly becoming my American nightmare. But then Mr. Virgil came over to the house once things settled. He tried to apologize, but I wasn't having it. When Dennis saw Mr. Virgil, he broke down in tears ran over and hugged the old man like he didn't have a father of his own. I couldn't be mad. It, it was what it was, truth be told. I liked Mr. Virgil and thought to myself, maybe God sent him. Maybe Paul was in Seattle praying that his son had a man in his life who could help him navigate life in his absence. So needless to say, we will never have another contest like that again. Even if my Virgil is fit to be tied over the results, I tried to explain to him, but he would have none of it. He told me in that tone he gets when he is not going to budge an inch that we needed to do something. Mr. Virgil was good white people. I can't say the same about his wife, whose best intentions never seem to pan out. Lights up on center area. Lou crosses to center holding a Bible. She is in her own front yard. Uh, hello, um, excuse me, uh, uh, Tina. Nina, it's Nina. Oh, that's right. Virgil told me your name was Nina, but I thought he said Tina, you know, like Tina Turner. <laughs> you must've heard of her. Uh, Proud Mary, keep on churning. Anyway, I got that name Tina in my head, but you're not Tina, you're Nina. Uh-huh. Uh, like one of uh, Christopher Columbus's ships, the Nina, the Pinta, and the... Uh, um, Santa Maria. That's right. Columbus being an Italian and Catholic man had to be Santa something, didn't it? You sure know your history there, Nina. Uh, my Virgil told me you were upset about that art contest and since we're neighbors and all I wanted to try to explain if I could, you know, so there's no hard feelings. The thing was, uh, Mavis was in a real pickle, Nina. Who is Mavis? Mavis Enright. She was one of the judges. She's a friend of yours? Church friend, you know, friends in the Lord. <laughs> Anyway, she has told me several times at church what a talented little ethnic artist your son was. 
I knew y'all are good dancers and singers. I had no idea y'all were visual artists too. Uh, and that was ignorance on my part. Mavis told me that your son's portrait of Jesus was technically better than Karen Ann's portrait of our Lord blessing that little blonde girl. And then she talked about how he captured the Lord's suffering and how she wondered how a child his age could understand anything about suffering like that. And I told her, I don't know. Children are very perceptive. Dennis has always been keenly aware of the world and its sorrows. I see. Well, that's real hard, isn't that something? My Virgil sure thinks your boy, your son is talented and he, he thought he should have won. I just think by making our Lord appear to be dark skin, it just tipped the scales. You need, see, most people think of Jesus as a white man with blue eyes. Look at all those portraits in the museums that painted him like that for years and all those epic movies and Ben-Hur and King Kings, the greatest story ever told. Even Hollywood with all its sinners knew they had to cast a light-skinned Jesus and all, and the reason all them folks knew what color Jesus was on account of all the research they may have done. Now, I know you two were upset with the results. My Virgil told me you were, so he, well, no, actually, we went and bought your son a brand new Bible, just like the one that Karen and got only in black. Virgil had his name embossed on the cover. Uh, not Virgil's name, of course, but your son's name. My son's name is Dennis. Uh, yes. See, it says so right there on the good book. Dennis Clark. See there, Clark. No E on the end. Virgil knew y'all didn't spell your name with an E. I, I didn't know for sure. I have a friend, Lucy Clark, who spells Clark with no E on the end either. Her, her family's English like mine. I didn't think yours was probably English, so I thought you might spell Clark with an E, but you don't. <laughs> I, I think it was my idea to get, I, it was my idea to get the black leather cover rather than the white one, you know, on account of black being more masculine. So I hope that sells the dust and we can all go back to the, how things were before. Before when Lincoln became president. Lights out on center area as Nina and Lou return to their chairs. Goes to show you when you try to open up to people from other cultures and different points of view, they respond to your kindness with cold silence. I was speechless. How does a bigot claim to love the Lord? Mavis told me that she had heard Karen Ann was so upset about all the fuss she had to wait a couple of weeks before her stomach settled enough for her to go and eat her first class pizza. And good book says, suffer the little children. Well, let me tell you what, when I heard about the suffering of Karen Ann and her dummy, it just got my blood to boil it. People are so full of themselves and don't care who they hurt. When things did settle down, Karen Ann invited Dennis to share her pizza. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. First Peter 4.10. Fade out image, charcoal drawing of Jesus on the cross with dark features. Portrait, scene four, fade in image. <clears throat> School photo, Dennis, 13, wearing an Academy for One World Learning Owls hoodie. The hoodie is not covering his head in this photo. We live near a middle school. It's one of the ones that was renamed. Well, let me see if I can get that new name right. They changed it from John B. Hood on account of him being a Confederate officer and all. I was all for changing the name of Dennis's middle school. School names should represent people who symbolize equal education for all. 
Dennis asked me why was the name being changed. I'm honest with my son. We don't baby talk around here. I told my son that John B. Hood was a man who fought to keep black people in slavery. Dennis agreed that the school did need a new name. A new name, which they let the kids pick. Can you imagine giving junior high kids the power to make decisions like that? <laughs> Waste of time and money, if you ask me. It's the times we're living in. How can we still be living in times where people are using racist history to symbolize freedom for all? The purpose of this nation was to come together for what we have in common for all parents or all perish for not being able to come together. Put John B. Hood's name on a bowling alley or on a bank, but his name being on a school was an insult to Brown versus Board of Education. Changing the school's name wouldn't change the fact that John Bell Hood was a fierce leader of the Texas Brigade in the Confederacy. Think about it. In 1954, there were no droves of blacks openly pushing against Jim Crow and making national news. Whites were the ones ensuring blacks moved up in the system, their white system, as long as blacks showed determination. Martin Luther King Jr. wasn't even a full year into being married to Coretta. There were no marches or counter sit-ins. John B. Hood's Texas Brigade was feared and fought in numerous battles. They tried to stop Sherman, that worthless son of a gun, when he and his soldiers burned Atlanta to the ground. Then here came Brown versus Board of Topeka saying that it was federally frowned upon if a public school separated students by race in public classrooms. It morally went against the blood of brothers, all races, who died in the name of fighting over who gets the final word over who gets to be free and educated. The new name was the academy, not school, mind you. It's an academy. No, it's an academy. I guess the word school wasn't good enough for them. So it's the Academy for One World, One World Learning. I'm serious. That's the name they gave to middle school. Academy for World, no, the Academy for One World Learning. If you really study the Civil War, you see how dumb it was. A bunch of white men killing each other over the property of black bodies when we were nobody's property to begin with. Good riddance, John B. Hood. Hello, Academy of One World Learning. Taking down the name of John B. Hood and putting up that new uppity name cost a pretty penny, I heard tell. And for what? All education should have that privatized feel. Dallas is still sorting out its racist history and the renaming of the middle school is just one of them. I raised my son to know whether whatever truth I can tell him, lace it with how I feel and hope he'd choose the same unity of humankind that I am, pouring into him through how we lived our lives. I raised him to be kind, attentive, creative, and honest without being protective of his body, mind, and spirit. And they had their mascot changed from the rebels to the owls. Dennis's idea for the new mascot was brilliant. You know, O for one, W for world, L for learning. Ow. I guess they added an S on the end of owl because they didn't want to be just one owl. <laughs> I don't know why not. They were okay with being just one world. All that school renaming business had me thinking of things I hadn't thought of in years. Dennis and his knowledge of the Civil War started just after he turned four. I had him in Upward Bound, a government-funded program for advanced students living in at-risk living in at-risk situations. I was heartsick at the name change. I grew up here, near here, and I was on the John B. Hood Rebel Stance Squad. We were called the Southern Bells, spelled B-E-L-L-E-S, as in girls and not as the metal thing that goes ding-dong. <laughs> Although there were a couple of Southern Bells in my squad that were a bit dingy, <laughs> you know, I had to be told to come in from the rain. <laughs> One day, Dennis came home from Upward Bound and asked, Mama, what two teams fought in the Civil War? Teams? Who's talking about the Civil War at four years old? Dennis said it was mentioned in a lesson about Harriet Tubman. We had the cutest little Johnny Reb hats and our outfits had short gray skirts lined in gold. And when you flicked the skirt, you saw our golden short shorts underneath. We stood at attention like this. I, can't. I kept my explanation light. 
only mentioned Confederate and Union and told him the reasons they fought, slave trading, slave holding, and how to tax slaves. We look just like little female Confederate soldiers, cute as can be. The bodice was gray and short sleeve with two rows of buttons running from the shoulders to the waist adorable. If we'd been there at Gettysburg and had been given rifles and those outfits, history just might have been rewritten then and there. One time we did a routine holding miniature Confederate flags in both hands. It was precious. And one of the officers, you know, that's what we called the dance squad leaders, had the brilliant idea of having us stand in two lines that formed a giant X on the football field like a giant stars and bars flag. People talked about it for weeks. So impressed. In some parts of America, white people still dress up in full regalia and recreate the Civil War. Imagine that. We did that flag routine when we played for the city against the Booker T. Washington Eagles. They must have been impressed too, because at the end of the routine, their fans didn't make a sound. <laughs> Our sponsor explained why, apparently, when an off audience is truly moved, they will just sometimes sit in silence, absorbing all they have witnessed. I hope I live to see the day when wars do not recreate, but re do, not, do not get recreated, but rehabilitated. Time hasn't changed the minds of men much. It was a different time. I guess some people think by changing names or taking statues down that that makes a difference. Don't they know that doesn't change anything? There was still a civil war and Johnny Reb was an example of what it meant to be a great American, but no, let's revise history and bend to the whims of a few. The new school name and mascot made a big impression on the community and Dennis was the talk of the town. Karen Ann was not the only one who came by to talk art and culture with my son. He joined a young artist group that met at the South Dallas Cultural Center every Saturday, got Karen Ann talking about double majoring in pre-colonial art and African-American studies when she goes to college. Let me tell you something else. Once that name got changed, I noticed how much louder it was over on that campus. Their so-called hippity hop music, it was way too loud. And there's no melody. How can a dance squad ever be expected to dance to music like that? Even if they do have rhythm, that hippity hop stuff is undanceable. So their dance squad is at a huge disadvantage. Now they expect neighbors like me who don't even have children in school to not only to not only pay taxes to support those schools, but that academy was always having their students knock on my door to raise fundraising, to fundraise money for supplies for their after school programs like art or dance or that awful hippity hop stuff. In my day, when it was just a school and not an academy, those things were already funded. It's just not right to expect us to bear their burden. Though Virgil didn't agree with me on that. Bless his heart. Way too given a person. The supplies and support Mr. Virgil gave to Dennis were what got us here. At this point, my son was a working artist. Mr. Virgil bought Dennis's contest painting that was entitled Black Jesus on the Cross. He purchased some of his other work as well. I doubt very seriously if any of it was hanging in his house. Knowing him, he had to hide it. <laughs> I hope not, but I'm no fool. As a thank you for all of Mr. Virgil's ongoing support of Dennis and the Academy's art programs, Dennis and I ordered a personalized school hoodie for Mr. Virgil. Dennis customized the owl with the colors of the flowers in the Perkins flower bed, yellow and pink. He wanted to surprise Mr. Virgil and asked me to put it on his rocking chair there on the porch. Fade out image, school photo of Dennis 13, wearing an Academy for One World Learning Owls hoodie. Fade, <clears throat> fade in image, Dennis's owl logo design. Lights up center area. Nina holds, <clears throat> excuse me, a school hoodie and crosses at Lou's porch area where Lou is, wa where Lou is watering. Yes. 
Oh, good afternoon. Afternoon. I was just going to leave this on the rocker. What is it? A little thank you from Dennis. He designed this hoodie for Mr. Virgil. Hoodie? What's that, that thing there on the front? It's an owl. It is. You sure could have fooled me. Owls aren't yellow and pink. The colors were inspired by the flowers in your flower bed. Owls are brown and gray. Not all. Well, maybe not all, but none of them are yellow and pink. Yes, that's true. Now, my Virgil won't wear anything that's pink. Well, Dennis just wanted to thank him for all his continued support. What continued support? Are you telling me that Virgil gave him more stuff? No, no, not to Dennis. Then who'd he give it to? Uh, did Virgil give that Academy some money? He did, didn't he? His donation was much appreciated. <sighs> How much? I don't really know. I see. I didn't mean to cause any problems. Uh-huh. If you don't want this. Not mine to want. It's for Virgil, isn't it? So give it to me and I'll make sure he gets it. Yellow and pink. Whoever heard of such a thing? What in a Sam Hill are those? They teaching those kids at that academy. Lights out on center area as Nina and Lou return to their chairs. <clears throat> Mr. Virgil got it all right, and I don't just mean the hoodie. That woman yelled at him for hours. I felt sorry for him. It made me leery about allowing my son too much freedom when visiting Mr. Virgil, but I realized he was good for Dennis. His wife, not so much. When Dennis came home from school, he asked if Mr. Virgil got his gift. I said he did and left it at that. Fade out image, Den Dennis's owl logo design. Portrait scene five, fade in image, school photo, Dennis, age 15, wearing a hoodie that covers part of his face. I had first noticed the slow Dr. Virgil's giddy up in early July. He was mowing one Saturday morning when I went out for groceries. And by the time I got back, that neighbor's kid and Karen Ann of all people were in the front yard raking up the grass clippings. My Virgil had apparently gotten too hot and gone inside. Mr. Virgil out in his yard trying to rake up some mowed grass made me feel sorry for the man. I had Dennis and Karen Ann go over there and finish it for him. Poor man looked like he was close to passing out. I was happy to see him accept their offer as he handed the rake to Dennis, who was all too happy to do it. Mr. Virgil wasn't crabby like his wife. I kept that woman on my prayer list. Karen Ann had to come to had come to become a regular at my helm on the weekends, and she too had started fitting right in Dennis and Mr. Virgil's friendship circle. Virgil was sitting on the sofa staring. I told him he was foolish trying to mow in that heat and went and got him some iced tea. He didn't say anything, and that's when I knew he was slowing down. Usually he would be on his high horse telling me to mind my own business. <clears throat> Dennis was concerned about Mr. Virgil. Most mornings, he made sure to go and visit him and mowed the lawn when he needed. He'd even taken it upon himself to set easels up in uh, the Pickens garage so he and Virgil could paint outside when the weather permitted. My son's compassion showed and it was as genuine as his ability to paint. Virgil spent most of that summer just sitting either inside during the heat of the day or on that porch rocking back and forth in the early light. He didn't have the energy to fix even little things like replacing the burned out light bulb in the garage. Mr. Virgil and Dennis would have conversations that lasted hours. They talk about everything from Old Testament versus New Testament to presidential elections to world peace. And all the while, Dennis would be tending to Virgil's needs, helping him out of his chair, getting him water, or showing Mr. Virgil how to work some new app on his mobile phone. It brought a smile to my face that my son was doing God's work through service. He took the bond he had with Mr. Virgil as his civic and Christian duty to help his neighbor and not be afraid of people who don't look like you. When you can get past that, you get to the human, not the skin color. Only Jesus can deliver this. That was a gem of wisdom that Mr. Virgil gave Dennis in one of their conversations. It was no wonder they got along. That Dennis boy would just come over to the house when it was too hot for Virgil on the porch and they would just talk and laugh. 
I don't know about what. What did those two have in common? But when it came to talking about painting, Mr. Virgil and Dennis's bond was undeniable. They both thought Pollock was overrated, believed that Lo the Louvre was the best art gallery in the world, and though neither of them had ever been, and that life imitates art and not the other way around. It was those conversations that kept those two laughing on the front porch across the street many a late night. Hottest summer on record then. I prayed Mr. Virgil would make it through. He was growing weak because Dennis told me that the weight being rested on him when he helped Mr. Virgil get up was getting heavier. Jesus healed the sick and the shut-in, a leper and the blind. Surely he could heal Mr. Virgil. He wasn't that old. Virgil laughed and said it was so hot there wasn't enough iced tea in the world to cool anyone down that summer. Fall was a welcome relief. Mr. Virgil was a Libra. We celebrated his 73rd birthday with a quick surprise party. <laughs> Dennis asked him to come look at some of his latest work. When Mr. Virgil walked in, I yelled surprise with a cake in one hand and Dennis, Dennis's gift in the other. Mr. Virgil's eyes twinkled as he grabbed the cupcake and bit into it. It was gone in less than a minute. Then we all sat around the kitchen table and watched him open his gift. It was a plaque that read, Best Unintentional Father Award. Mr. Virgil burst into laughter and tears as he hugged Dennis. It was their last hug. Mr. Virgil was blessed to see 73. He got to see 73 birthdays. That's a lot compared to 15. On that awful night. On that awful night. I was going into the laundry room, getting ready to wash some clothes when I heard a noise in the garage. Dennis had been on our porch working on one of the paintings in a series of paintings called Mr. Virgil. The sun was going down and I brought my son his hoodie to buffer him from the cool air. A cold front was coming through. He noticed that Mrs. Pickens had been out in the garage earlier that afternoon, cleaning and putting stuff out for the bulk trash. He had offered to help, but she had told him she was done for the day. Later that evening, after dinner, Dennis went out on the porch to bring the paintings in. I went to Virgil, I went to find Virgil to go and see what the noise was when I saw a note from him. He had gone to the store to get an acids for his indigestion. He had been complaining about his indigestion all day. Dennis came back in saying he needed to go back out to let the garage door down. I thought he meant the garage door in his own house. I got Virgil's gun. I went back to the laundry room and I opened the door out to the garage. It was dark on account of the light bulb still being burned out, but I could see his hooded shadow. He was bent over holding something in his hand. I guess I must have made some noise because he turned and before he could come after me, I pulled the trigger, shot twice and ran back inside. I didn't know what else to do. But I knew Virgil would, so I waited for Virgil to get back. I thought about calling the police, but I didn't. I needed Virgil to be with me and tell them how he had taught me what he called the intruder drill. Warn them you're going to shoot and then shoot. I needed Virgil there so they under stood. I was protecting myself. It was, it was a while before he came home. I heard his truck pull up, then I heard him yelling. So I went out to the garage with the gun and his hands were bloody. I thought he fought with the intruder and I asked if he was all right. He was shaking, asking what happened. Where was the ambulance? I didn't say anything. You did call an ambulance, didn't you? And then his face, those kind eyes of his hardened, looking at me like I was a stranger to him. You just left him there for God's sake, Llewellyn, call ambulance. Then he ran across the street, leaving me there went off in such a hurry he left the lights on his truck i could see the garbage can was knocked over and the trash was on the floor that must have been the crash i heard earlier i looked over and i saw who it was 
What was I supposed to do? You made me do this. I always knew you were no good. You made full Virgil with your act, but not me sneaking on my property like that. Mr. Virgil collapsed in my living room, clutching his chest, trying to tell me something. He was out of breath and there was blood on his hands. I wasn't sure if it was his or his wife's, so I called an ambulance and tried CPR, but Mr. Virgil's face had become ashen. His breathing, he couldn't, wasn't. I called out for Dennis, but he was nowhere to be found. I assumed he'd run down to Karen Ann's. Then I went to get Mrs. Pickens. Virgil never came back. I slowed midway crossing the street. Mrs. Pickens was standing near a body. She, she was holding a gun. He died from a heart attack because he ran over to that house. Suddenly the garage felt like a closet. The hoodie had a bloody owl. A pool of blood was still widening from the, beneath the body. It's a boy's body. That was my son's body. Something in me shifted. I, I felt like everything around me was a lie, including Dennis being on the ground in his own blood, everything had a traumatic and sudden fakeness. He was more concerned about that boy than me and what I was going through. Dennis? No, wake up, baby. Dennis, hold on, mama's here. Virgil didn't let me explain. No, this can't be happening. God wouldn't do this to me. God, please say this is not happening. Dennis, wake up. Please, God, please. This needed to happen. Sorry, I missed it. Um, I'm... Is it Something me? jumped. She just stood there? No, my page oh, jumped. I'm sorry. Sure. She just stood there like a soldier without a war. I turned Dennis over. His eyes were still open. His body still warm, but he was heavy. I can still feel the weight of his body in my hands. There wasn't an ounce of life in him. It was seeping out of him in rivers of, blood, of, of red. I tried to do CPR, but there was so much blood. It, it wouldn't stop the bubbling from his chest, his heart. If only Virgil had stayed with me in the garage. Dead. He was dead. Dennis. Dennis. My Dennis. My son. My only son. Dead. Dead. Dennis. 15. Dennis. Black. Dennis, my son. He was dead. Eight out image school photo, Dennis, 15, wearing a hoodie that covers part of his face. Virgil died on the count of that woman and her son. How did this happen? Jesus, why would you do this to me? I was just protecting myself and my property. I had to know what happened. The shopping bag with his in acid sat in the truck for days. Dennis's portrait of Mr. Virgil sat on our porch until after his funeral. Fade in image, Dennis's portrait of Mr. Virgil in his rocker on the porch. His funeral was, was a blur. I was surprised there weren't more people at Virgil's service. The church wasn't even half full. The service was standing room only. When Paul heard the news, he had a stroke, wasn't able to make the funeral. Dennis is being treated like a modern day Emmett Till or Trayvon Martin. News cameras and a few local civic leaders were there. Karen Ann spoke. She loved my son. They were friends in the best way. Yet and still, the majority of the service, I just sat there thinking that I was too young to be burying my own child. My prayers had not been answered. My hopes, my dreams, and the deepest desires were being put in a casket. It was awful. Hardly anyone came to see me after the funeral, except my lawyer and that awful reporter. Day and night, I wondered how long Dennis had lain in the dark on that oil-stained ground without me or someone who cared about his life, telling him everything was gonna be okay, whispering in his ear to hold on. Did he see it coming? What was Mrs. Pickens thinking when she killed my son? Neighbors stared at me when I would drive by. I can't get my son back. I stopped answering the door and I stopped attending Sunday service. Dennis's smile was gone. His love of peach cobbler. News fans were camped out across the street in the Pickens yard. My phone was ringing every five minutes. 
genocide become a hashtag and I'd become numb. All them people looking at me, shaking their heads. His paintings, his hugs, his warmth, gone. I can't get them back. They were calling Miss Pickens racist on Facebook. Her name was Luella, but folks who knew her called her Lou. I didn't know her. I wonder if Dennis even knew. Who are those people to be judging me? I tried to pray, but all I could hear was my son's voice talking about the black presence in the Bible. Dennis's voice questioning if maybe the God who served black people was different from the God white people forced on their belief system. And I've been putting my all into a white God, but God is God, right? I was protecting myself. She pulled the trigger twice. They'd have done the same, I guarantee. I have nightmares about Dennis being alone in that garage with Mrs. Pickens, standing there, afraid. Afraid to seek emergency help. Why didn't either one of them call 911? At least Mr. Virgil ran to tell me. There was an intruder in my garage, hiding his face with that hood thing, hiding his identity. White people like his wife? were dangerous and needed to be put on their own island where racists could be scared of each other. Why hide you who you are? Unless, unless you are up to no good. They could pull triggers on each other's shadows. That boy was up to no good, but I'm the one they shake their heads at. I'll remember the bad in all of this, but then I remember how God brought me Dennis, how God brought me real love, how God gave sent me Paul and blessed me with a family. That was the God I wanted to worship and that was the God I needed. One who would secure me in this black veil of skin. A God who didn't allow others to see my son as an intruder. Hmm. It just wasn't safe for people like me to live there anymore. Life was going on without me. Time had me in handcuffs. You made sure to get it, keep a gun loaded by my bedside and another there in the laundry room hidden in a fabric softener box. I had to protect myself so I could sleep at night. Paul begged me to move out of the house, but it was Dennis's first home, his first studio, his first front yard, his first sidewalks, his first sense of freedom. I couldn't leave. I started getting ready to sell the house, cleaning, fixing things up, like replacing the light bulb in the garage. This was our home and no one was taking that away from me. That garage was full of all sorts of stuff that Virgil had kept for himself. But it was difficult to stay. It was full of all kinds of things that reminded me of Dennis. Most of it needed to be thrown in the trash. Even something as simple as taking the trash out for pickup reminded me that Dennis wasn't there to do it. Fade out image, Dennis's portrait of Mr. Virgil in his rocker on the porch. Lights up on center area. Lou enters with a rolling trash can and places it in front in, in her front yard. <clears throat> At the top of the pile of trash is the framed charcoal drawing, Black Jesus on the cross. Lou exits to get more trash. Nina enters her front yard area with a rolling trash container. Fade in image, charcoal drawing, Black Jesus on the cross. Nina sees the painting and crosses the street and takes it. Lou re-enters with more trash, sees that Nina has the painting. You trespass on my property. What you gonna do, shoot me? Give that back to me. I dare you try to, try to take it. That's not yours, you hear me? I'll call the police. Call them and ask what's taking so long to come put you in handcuffs. Give me that picture, it goes in my trash pile. All I got left of Dennis is his artwork and the blood-stained hoodie with an owl on it. I'll be damned if I allow you to destroy anything else of his. So you call the police, you frightened, hateful woman. Call him. Nobody hears your threats but God and he ain't pleased. Lou grabs drawing from Nina. She is about to throw it, but stops. Those eyes, they're just like my Virgil's. Those eyes saw my son's talent. They were kind eyes. He had no right being there. Your boy broke the law. His name was Dennis and he didn't break anything. His life mattered and you didn't care. 
Dennis had no business in my garage. He was trying to help. I didn't need any of his help. I didn't ask for any of his help. Nina, unable to listen, turns to leave. It was his fault. I was within my rights. He was unlawfully on my property. Nina crosses back to Lou. My son was at your house three or four times a week. Not that you ever offered him refreshments, asked him about school, shared a funny story, or even shook his hand. Your boy, your Dennis, was trespassing. I had to stand my ground. It's a pity that law doesn't work for Black people. It isn't about race. It's about... About a friendship and a paranoid old woman who was biased against Black people so much that she killed a young Black child in cold blood. You people need to get over yourselves and stop using that race card every chance you get. You can try all you want to wash your hands clean like Pontius Pilate, but there's blood on them. You are a murderer. Murderer. Fade out image, charcoal drawing, black Jesus on the cross. Portrait, scene six, fade in image, lose mugshot. I don't sleep much anymore. I have Dennis's artwork displayed all over the house. I feel protected by it, protected from monsters like Mrs. Pickens. What has happened to the world? When people like me, God fearing folk, good God fearing folks, have to live by the sword because of the action of people who make you feel unsafe, they don't understand boundaries or their place coming onto their your property, hiding their faces. What gives them a right to do that? I have rights too, you know, but that doesn't seem to matter anymore. Karen Ann comes by once a week to check on me. Bless that child. One day, she had to remind me to lock my front door. One day, the police came and picked me up. Me. We talked about the charges I was pressing. Karen Ann wasn't in agreement. She said I should show forgiveness for Mrs. Perkins. I was fingerprinted and had a mugshot taken like I was a criminal or something. I wasn't about to forgive. I wanted to forget, so I kept to myself. I was out on bail, but restricted to house arrest. Only my house sold. So I was confined to this little apartment I was renting. I didn't meet my new neighbors. He was white, she was Mexican, and I was depressed. My lawyer came by to talk about my case, and he brought the final closing papers on the house. I saw the new owner signatures, Henry and Margarita Valdez Henderson. I just went to work and came home. Mexicans living in my and Virgil's home. After I win my appeal, I'm starting a new life far away from all of them. Fade out image. Lose mugshot. <laughs> After the trial, Karen Ann left this on the porch. Fade in image. Karen Ann's painting of Dennis being blessed, wearing an Academy of One World Learning hoodie. I was so right to get out there. I just need to get out of here now. Mm. The title car read, Mark 10, 14. I knew the verse. Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God be difficult to enter. I can't understand how this could happen. We had used the defense that had worked in George Zimmerman's case. The painting was similar to the one she would painted years ago for that church contest, except for one thing. I'm a God-fearing woman. Virgil and I went to church, supported that church for years, years, and hardly any of those church members bothered to come to his funeral. It was Dennis she painted as the child in God's arms. They didn't come to my defense at the trial either. At the trial, we all had to relive the deaths of Dennis and Mr. Virgil. We all had to re-witness the horror of that night and what it meant to the well-being of society. It was biased towards me. I was watching Mrs. Perkins use the same law that worked for George Zimmerman, but not Amber Geiger. The jury believes Zimmerman because he was a man, probably a Jew, to boot. It was just a 70-year-old white Christian woman defending herself. The cards were stacked against people like me. The more she pushed, the more she pushed it, the less I liked her. 
not a humble, apologetic bone in her body for what happened. I had done nothing wrong. By her waiting for her husband to come home before she called the emergency services, it was considered second degree murder. I told them I shot the intruder and then waited for my husband to get home because I needed him there with me because I was so frightened. That's not murder. That's a woman defending herself from someone who doesn't know the limits of his place in the world. And that lawyer jumped in and asked what I meant by the limits of his place. Did I think I was better than him? Is that why I didn't call for help? It was a trap, you see. He got to me. That boy deserved to just lie there thinking the likes of him could come on my property and be pleased. Who did that Nick boy think he was? I'd never say this out loud and probably won't think it again, but Mrs. Perkins can go to hell and so can Jesus. The minister of my church came to see me in jail and he told me that God is forgiving. She was found guilty in an eight to three count ruling. Forgiving. Of what? Justice had prevailed. I told the minister if he thought I needed forgiveness, he didn't need to come back. But my son was gone. A martyr of sorts. A hashtag. I am perfectly capable of praying on my own. And I know what the book, good book taught me. God helps those who helps themselves. And I was helping myself when I shot that intruder. Singing Hills was voted the safest, safest urban subdivision in the nation by the Dallas Morning News. <laughs> Fade out image, Karen Ann's painting of Dennis being blessed wearing an Academy of One World Learning hoodie. I know what was in my heart that night and nobody else does except the good Lord, of course. Trusting white people takes faith and I'm fresh out of faith. I know I am safe in God's hands. I thought by praying for Dennis, he would be saved. I thought by turning his well-being over to Jesus that he'd get to see manhood and bring me grandbabies. I thought it was a blessing when I was able to stop paying rent on a one bedroom and buy a three bedroom home. I thought if I lived according to the Bible that Dennis and me would be protected from looking like niggers, niggers or niggers to anybody else. We talked right, we walked right. We were a clean family with Christian values, quiet, law abiding. These are my roots. Made in image, Dennis's chalk drawing on a sidewalk depicting the earth held in the hands of God. I have faith in the Lord. Now when I'm around white people, I'm always asking myself what kind of white people are they? For the most part, however, I avoid them. I am so full of God's love. I sleep in Dennis's room even though I can no longer smell his scent on the sheets. The Lord knows me so well. I think about all the black children without hashtags or news coverage, the ones who didn't have structure, guidance, or protection. I think about all the boys and girls before Emmett Till and those in between Sean Bell and Philando Castile who are gone because some gun-toting white lunatic decided that because they're seeing a black person, they have every right to pull the trigger. Jesus, colonialism, systems and systems. I find peace in his hands. I have no peace. I get no sleep. I just keep wondering which one is going to pull a gun out on me, empty an entire cartridge into my body, string me up in a jail cell and say I committed suicide. My faith cannot be shaken. My son died because he was black. I have hope because I have done nothing wrong. A warning shot. If she would have shot a warning shot, Dennis would have run away and left that garage. A simple warning shot. Fade out image, Dennis's chalk drawing on the sidewalk depicting the earth held by the hands of God. Silence. There is no hate in me. I sent a large donation to Black Lives Matter. I also sent one to the Association of Black Police Officers. While everyone else sits and waits for Jesus to come back, I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is. I am bathed in the blood of the lamb. I take meds to help me sleep. I'll drift off and Dennis will be laying there face down in this 
emerging pool of blood and suddenly he begins to drown in it and choke. I try to pick him up, but he's too heavy. I scream for help and Mrs. Pickens walks up beside me and shoots him dead. Silently. And God knows and in my heart, I only wanted to protect myself and my home. White people have to be watched closely. And if it is my faith that I am to be persecuted, then I am in good company. Fate ain't got nothing to do with it. The Lord Jesus was wrongly tried and found guilty too. You have to remain vigilant. I must remain strong in my convictions like Jesus was. You got to separate the wheat from the chaff. It's the only way to freedom. I am not forsaken. I will be free. Jesus loves me. You hear me? Jesus loves me. Lights out. Hey. Woo! Ladies, thank you. That was wonderful. That was thank hard. You. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, was, that, was, the, that was excellent. But it, yeah. Do y'all have feedback? Um, it was really, it's, it's a great play. Um, yeah. I, I think it flows uh, pretty well. I think, um, yeah, I need to kind of process it. Sure. Yeah, before I give any good like sure. textural stuff, but I think overall, just you know, and I really admire y'all for writing this because it can be produced right now. It can yeah. be a Zoom play. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. or a, a, a easily done film mm -hmm. you know, that it's ready. Yeah, it's ready. It can go. It's ready. Well, I have to say, both of you, I, I couldn't have asked for a better reading. Oh, thanks. That too. And it's just, um, I mean, you both got the nuances of it, you know, and I appreciate that, that it's not, you know, uh, Lou, the frightening thing about Lou is she doesn't know she's hateful. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's so you so did a nice job on the struggle. I mean, you know what I mean? And, and that, I, I, I thank you. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's very very real, very right now. Um, it tugs at tugs at you hard. I feel like I need to go take a really good hot shower. Yeah, I, yeah, I bet you I do. Yeah. You need to clean <laughs> off. And go. I don't want this woman. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. pour another glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> go hug my baby. What's <laughs> your address? I may need to drop by. <laughs> yeah, I got I gotta go hug my baby. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. I thank y'all. I definitely heard some stuff. I think Nina, um, there are some areas where she's a little flat. I could hear it. I literally could hear it. she's just, she falls a little bit flat. So um I'm I'm grateful because the last time I had to you know uh, Ruth and I read it, so we couldn't mm. necessarily step back yeah. and see it so i definitely saw some areas where i need to go back in and just kind of like get i need to channel nina i think i was so busy trying to uh write to make sure we feel those spaces mm -hmm. that um i disconnected from certain things that are actually happening mm -hmm. and i think nina needs to be kind of like hyper aware in certain areas like that church scene i mean the um contest scene mm -hmm. um nina there's she needs she needs to be asking some questions she needs yeah. to be wondering yeah. what the problem is and and needs to be told that that thing and so there's yeah. just a, some continuity stuff going on there that and it's on nina it's really on yeah nina. i i do think there's some uh, opportunity for for paul to be developed a little bit but i think he's you know he's he's kind of a it's, it explains why he's not there right but there's some, there's still some like, okay, so what is he doing? It's been a lot of years. He's still in this PTSD facility. Like what's yeah, going on? Yeah, that came up in the last conversation we talked yeah. about. Okay. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the one line that clunked to me was the fact that it got the award for safest place, especially if he got shot. And I it don't, after that. I don't know yeah. whether that's something that it had been given that award and maybe we set that up, but that's why 
she wanted to move to the neighborhood. Right. Mm. It just seemed like it was, that's the only line, the whole thing that I thought kind of clunked in the sense of going, okay. even yeah. Dallas isn't that insensitive. I mean, Dallas has got its insensitivity, but yeah. to have given yeah. that award right after a black kid got shot, I, I'm right. Even Dallas it's, isn't quite that. No, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Really yeah. Okay. yeah. But I think it's excellent. I think it's an excellent play. Yeah. Well, very, very, very well done. Thank you. Very, um, it's like, it doesn't, it, it has impact, but mm -hmm. it's not like this is right. And this is wrong. I think you've right. got a good, you've got a nice story. Mm -hmm. So they're yeah. interested in the story and we follow the mm -hmm. reality through the story of these people. Yeah. I do think, um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you. just I would, the picture of Virgil and Dennis. So yeah, so um, I, I think that um, Lou possibly could benefit from some something that makes her more endearing, mm -hmm. that kind of puts some conflict in, you know, because she, she kind of plays the bad guy through the whole thing. Yeah. So if there was some part of it that makes you say, okay, she's not that bad, but... <laughs> she is <laughs> yeah no, she needs to have some kind of redeeming value something something in her early on that makes you say okay well maybe she is okay um it I just kind of it creates uh, a little bit of death oh, the apple character. pie wasn't enough the apple pie wasn't <laughs> she didn't know they were black when she made the peach it. cobbler i'm sorry yeah she didn't know they were black when she made the piece oh that's right that's so, right <laughs> yeah i think the the scene that the scene that almost does it is the when she brings the Bible over. Yeah, almost. She got, mm. you know, and yeah. maybe, maybe if that wasn't Virgil's idea, maybe if that was her idea. That right. I went out and I bought this. But I, you know, then again, I don't know if that's true to her character. Right. I, 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 what What's scary is I, I've got some folks that I grew up with that are kind of based on this woman in they really fall into the Jesus. I've got the Bible. Yeah. But she yeah. doesn't, I, 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 I don't know that she's capable of that. I mean, I, yeah. what I appreciated with your reading was you did capture that. I didn't feel like she was evil, right. but you, and you laugh at some of the things she says and, and, and you really played it quite straight. Yeah. And just in her own little world of, I think she believes at the end, you know, Jesus yeah. will take care of me. I've done nothing wrong. She feels like a martyr. Yeah. Yeah. She feels like a martyr. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, can, she comes, yeah. has a breakdown there, you know, where suddenly it, well, that's kind of based on one of my relatives who went mm. to a big family. Uh, she lost her husband then she very came very 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 close to losing her son in a mm. shooting accident mm. like less than a year after her husband died and uh, she has become super Jesus-y can't focus anywhere anyhow without you know yeah. you can't talk to her because she's like oh, yeah, every, sure. every other word yeah. is Jesus yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that last line on that where she said, Jesus loves me. I don't know whether that needs to be expanded because I, I kind of saw it as a defiance. Mm. It's like a challenge of I'm fine. You understand because yeah. it's almost a confrontation. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's what I get with some of these Trump supporters when they start screaming, yep. you know, like going, yep. what are you saying? But I think that may be, maybe it needs another line or something to push it. Okay. You know? Okay. Um, Thank no. you for the invite. I really appreciate yes. it. Thank you so much. Thank you. And y'all stay safe. Happy New Year. And uh, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm going to need to see that baby. I need to yeah. see that baby. There's, you can grab it. it. We're having a fit. <laughs> Oh, oh, how old? <laughs> 19 months. <gasps> oh, you know, God, my, my husband, you know, is a physician, and he one time said, God makes them at 18 months adorable because it gets you through the terrible twos because they are so cute, but you sometimes just want to pinch their little heads off. Mm -mm. No, I think he's early with the terrible twos. He's being pretty terrible. Oh, <laughs> God makes them cute. God makes them cute. 
Yeah. There's just enough cute to, to not make you kill them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've been trying to rely on that cute, and it ain't working with my husband after well, was, married for like almost 50 years. It ain't working, okay? Ain't working. <laughs> well, God, that's why God makes wine. Yeah, there you go. Our, our bourbon. No, whatever. No, but, <laughs> exactly. Wasn't exactly. that Jesus' Bison. first miracle was water and wine. wine? Water the wine. Good wine. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you, ladies. Um, thank okay, you. thank you. I'm going to see if I can get this to uh, see if this thing will. Uh... And Kamika, you want want to take a day or two and let's touch base? Um, Let's touch base after New Year's. Can we do that? <laughs> I think that's a perfect idea. Yeah. Give me time to Happy New Year, life. everybody. Stay safe. Okay. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New bye. Year. Thank All you, right. guys. Thank bye. you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.